Hello everybody, it's SOD Mad Haven here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Fangula, the AE Phase 1, a Tier 9 American Heavy Tank. It is a premium tank that is purchasable with gold. Um, later than the future, I am pretty sure they're going to be adding this tank in to be available for free experience like the Tier 10s. So the Object 260, the 279E, which I don't think you can use free experience anymore to get the 279E. But, you know, I'm hoping that they do add this tank, that way everyone is capable of getting it. Now, there is a package inside the store called the Double Duo. It comes with the Dread Dozer and the Fangula, the AE Phase 1. Now, today we're going to be doing the Fangula, if I am capable, and willing for today. I will try to get another video out of the Dread Dozer. If not, it will be coming on October 14th, 2020. Now, the Fangula, the A Phase 1, jumping straight into it, the armor, camouflage, weapon. Honestly, this tank, there's not a lot of flaws. The 10 degrees of max gun depression, capable of working ridgeline, the armor itself, the way that it's angled, the engine, however, at 16.07 horsepower per ton at 900 total. 35 top speed. 35 top speed feels a little bit slow compared to some of the Russians and a couple of Americans that are capable of hitting 40. Um, reverse speed at 12. You're going to feel that really hits you whenever you're trying to do some brawling or you're going to try and go after side scraping or whatever. Backing up the take to take your shot you're going to be struggling a tad bit with that reverse speed at 12 but honestly it gets the job done fire chance at 20 and if you look you have a fuel tank up in the front so if they do hit you in the side between the left and right side of your bubble right there you have a chance of being set on fire and that that's no going on that's no fun now your gun is 120 millimeters with a 13.5 standard reload you are capable of getting this reload down to 10.68 with a premium consumable Brothers in Arms with a 100% trained crew, um, gun rammer, and improved ventilation. Now, dispersion values on this tank at 0.38, uh, those are better off for closer quarters to mid-range. Uh, trying to take pop shots at long range or taking long, long shots in general. It, it's going to be maybe one out of three shots, maybe every other shot. Or if you're lucky, every single shot that you take. Aiming time at 2.7, 2.7 is not too bad. 2.7 is pretty quick, and with a fully trained crew, vertical stabilizers, or enhanced gun lane drive, you can probably get it down to about maybe 1.9 to 2.1. Now, accuracy on the move and rotating turret, they are some pretty high numbers up there. Trying to take snapshots on the move, it doesn't work out too well, but, you know, take a shot, you might hit. Now... Gun elevation, 15 degrees. I have felt that lacking for me in the couple of matches that I've already put inside this tank. There's been a few moments where driving in flat land, a guy right above me, and I have to aim up, and suddenly my gun's capped out, and I'm not used to having 15 degrees of gun elevation. I, I play some tanks that have 22 or 20. So if you're used to playing those, you will feel it kind of lacking on this tank, but the benefits aren't the gun elevation. It's the gun depression and the overall armor. Now, your traverse speed at 28 degrees, your terrain resistance, the soft ground, you're going to feel it especially on that soft ground at 2.4. That power to weight ratio just disappears. Um, so best bet, try and avoid that. If you have to, go for it. Now, the view range at 390 and the turret rotation at 26 degrees isn't too bad. The view range at 390 compared to most tier 9s in the same tier have got 400 to 420. Some tier 10s, you know, M48 Patton, for instance, at 420 meters of view range. It, they are going to outspot you. But overall, it's not bad. You're capable of spotting out your own targets. If you want to make an aggressive play, you can. Especially with the armor that the AE Phase 1 has. Your signal range of 745 meters is just going to help out with spot assist and radio communication. Ammunition, every single round inside of this tank, you are looking at 1067 meters per second. Your standard penetration at 258 is going to really help you out a lot. Your premium penetration, your base penetration for premium is over 340. Your high explosives are at 60. Now, the crew inside this tank, I have not lost a single crew member yet, but the driver positioning right in the front, if you're being shot from up above, you are going to lose your driver. 
especially if it's a dead center hit. Now, your three crew members inside the turret, they are extremely well defended. So the 292 on the cheeks in the front drops down to 254, especially on the outsides. 215 on the side of the cheeks. It's going to make it really hard to pin this turret. This turret is a monster. Now, jumping down to your side panels here, you actually have a top cover right there. So people, it's going to be a little bit harder to aim for your bubble on the side, your little dome. Your dome starts off at 203, drops down to 177, 152, and on and on and on. Now, whenever your side is gripping inside this tank, the only part that is pinnable is actually your 203. Everything else beyond that is over 304 millimeters thick. So, that's going to really help you out. The lower plate inside this tank, yeah, it's a tad bit flat compared to most, but it still has a slight angle to it. If you are coming around a corner at about a 40 degree angle like this, you can actually bait shots. Your top plate's over 120, your lower plate at 171. That 171 is actually equivalent to 310 to 304 millimeters thick at this angle coming around a corner. So unless they are loading premium or trying to completely go through it with dead set heat or APCR, APCR might have a better chance of going through it because they readjust by two degrees. But whenever they're shooting heat at you, just increase your angle a tad bit, auto ricochet. So start off, fix, start off, fix. And what I mean by that is, start off here, and then as you're backing up, just slowly angle to bait the shot. Second they fire, automatic ricochet. Your top plate at 120, whenever you are head-to-head -head against somebody, they can pin this plate. The angling on it is not the deepest, it is not a super thick plate, but it is more angled than most mediums that have 120. And some pike noses, but most of the pike noses with 120 are tier 8s. Now, jumping further back, your 88mm is a side armor, the auto ricochet position, right there, no problem. Now, the top here at 76, that cannot be overmatched. It is basically an auto ricochet, even on flatland. Jumping up, you got 50mm, 50mm can be overmatched by a 155, but this. Seeing that there's two 50s here, that actually might be a 50.2, which means that they're going to need 156 millimeters. So you actually might be able to block a teal of an OE4 or an OE3. Now, I have a replay. This is an ace tanker. This was actually a really nice match. Uh, Blade didn't exactly have the greatest match. He got ammo racked inside the standard B and... To load his final shell took 20 seconds. But even though his reload was taking forever, we still had a really good push and a really good match. We are middle tier and artillery? I completely forgot that artillery was in this match. I don't think I ever got shot at by them once because of the positions that we took. Now, during the mornings and during the nighttime, you run into some players that are a little bit greedy. They, they want to get all the damage, so they're, they're not going to be afraid of pushing their teammates out of the way if they think that their teammates are being useless or whatever. You know, it, it's either that or they're just going to, whatever, they're not thinking, they're doing whatever they want to do, they don't care that you're there, they want the position, they're going to try and take it. So, this match turned out really good. I wasn't expecting an ace tanker out of this. I wasn't expecting, uh, you know, a nice little game. It's it's not a high caliber. I do have a high caliber replay, but it was only a second class mastery at the time. This one, it was a lot more close quarters. So I chose this replay out of the couple of matches that I played. And honestly, this is the first day that this tank is out. So this ace tanker replay, I'm going to be uploading a different one later in the future. Maybe a week from now, maybe two weeks from now. And that is just because since it's day one, you know, the experience needed, there's not a lot of base experience that you need to get that ace tanker right now. You know, maybe tomorrow there will be more of a higher experience cap because, I, you know, the tank's been out for more than 24 hours. So far, though, the AE Phase 1, I'm very impressed. Plus, I mean, just look at the skin they gave this. 
I mean, it's a little cheesy. It reminds me of some of those, you know, older, just the older Halloween styled stuff that you would find at Walmart or Kmart. But for me, it, it kind of matches the Hot Wheels theme just because it brings the kid out of you. So I, I actually really like the color theme that they put on this. Now, this WZ-111 QL, ooh, he just took a big fat slap from Artie. And I do believe that I, I missed the call out saying that I did hit his ammo rack right away, making him waste a repair kit. And right now he's tracked down there. So, the M454, it is definitely not an Andre the Giant. We can go through that side armor. That's only 60. Andre the Giant, I've said this multiple times, ridiculous amount of armor. And right here is what I was talking about, about the players that are, they don't care. I was trying to back up to take a side shot, and instead of him allowing me, he just kept trying to push forward, push forward, push forward, because of greed. He wants to damage, he wants to kill, he wants to get his experience. That right there is how you make matches a loss really, really fast. Now... I don't know why you need to do that. There, There is no reason to be that aggressive at all. But he survived the whole match. So, oh, sorry, he died. <laughs> Maybe he should have paid attention to where the team was and fell back. Now, coming up, this is what I was talking about, about the traverse speed. You are going to get... A little bit outmatched and outclassed, especially against mediums and lights. Now, I'm asking Blade, you know, how many shells he's got, and he told me one, and then he's like, two. Just second one barely loaded. I'm like, alright, come put those two shells in. So, first shell, tracks him. And here we go. Double whammy. 618 double sack. Our shells hit at the exact same time. And... That FV202 is a little sad, you know. <laughs> that that was a really good combination right there. We have two tier 9s, and so far we have taken down three tier 10s. So the QL, the Amex, M4, and soon to be a fourth, the Andre the Giant. Andre the Giant... He's got really thick side armor for whatever reason they felt they needed it. Uh, that shot in the hatch really surprised me, especially with 258 standard pin and AP rounds that will readjust by 5 degrees on impact. So getting to the side, and I'm, I'm not even dealing with it, loading the premium. The side armor of the Andre the Giant at 150 on the lower part and then on the top back plate where it says 8th Wonder of the World on the the Giant is over 100 with 20 millimeters of spaced armor. I, I, I think it's just ridiculous that they gave that tank so much armor. Now, our cap, we're like a whole second ahead. It's an automatic win since they did the immediate drop off rather than ties. There, there's no more ties anymore. I've watched a couple of matches where people have literally... Traded shells, and just because one shell hit first, that team won. Not even a tie. Now, Mastery Badge and a Sniper Medal. Mastery Badge wasn't, you know, not exactly the greatest Mastery Badge, but you know what? First one I got. I didn't even miss a single shot. We just had five ricochets. Everything hit. Really good run. So far, this is the first day that this tank is out. And what I recommend to get it, if you want to get it early and you want to go after the Prime Pack, which honestly, if, you, if you're going to buy the Prime Pack, you'd be better off buying the bundle because the Prime Pack is 22145 That's just the single single tank. And the Duo Bundle was only 20600 and that came with the M48A2 and the AE Phase 1. So I'd say if, if you want to get this tank, don't buy the primed, buy the bundle. Get both of them. That would be the best buck for your money. So far, I'm really impressed with the AE Phase 1. I 
got to say, compared to PC, you know, we don't have the same statistics that they do. But so far, the tank's been doing really well, and it, it holds up to the heavy name. Now, yeah, I'd, I'd recommend to get this. Uh, just one little heads up, though. That 25 millimeters in the front, that can be overmatched by 85 millimeters and higher. So keep that in mind whenever you're using this tank, driving on flat land. Right below the turret, if you hit that, you know, you're, you're going to really hurt them. Especially if you hit that right side and you hit it just right. That's right where the ammo rack is located. Back of the turret, the entire back of the turret, avoid at all costs looking away from the enemy. That is going to be a death trap for your repair kits. Alrighty, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment. I would much rather prefer comments over likes, to be honest, because I, I want to know your guys' feedback and what you want to see out of this channel. So have a wonderful day, and we'll see if we can get that dozer out. Seriously. I mean, look at this thing. It's got a plow. You can have some fun with this. The only thing I don't like is the hatch. Alrighty, you guys have a wonderful day.